Hello, my name's Steve and this is my 2020 Kia e Nero. And this little unit here is a comma three running open pilot, um, which enhances the lane keeping assist and um, intelligent uh, cruise control that the car has and will eventually be developed um, into some sort of full self driving. Currently, it gives you a very similar experience to uh, what Tesla Autopilot currently offers. It's not particularly suitable for small windy roads like this one, but you can see that it's actually plotting the edges of the road in red on each side, a, white, a small thin white line down the middle for the road markings to show where the lane is, and then it's plotting the route it wants to take along the, white, the big thick white line down the middle. Now, like I said, it's not suitable for these roads, so it's not currently engaged, but I'm just about to pull onto an A road and I will engage it once I'm up to speed on there. Right, so here I am on a better road that's more suitable. Still a bit twisty, but uh, good enough. So you engage it in the same way as you would normally and then set the speed to what you want. So I'm going to set my speed to 60 because that's the limit for this road. But it's actually doing 35, 32, whatever on there um, because it's slowing down because of the vehicles in front. But as you can see, hands-free operation. It's got a green border around the screen to show that it's currently uh, driving itself. And um, it overrides the sensors on the steering wheel so that it's not constantly telling you to put your hands back on the steering wheel, which is quite nice. Now, if I actually look away, hopefully it will uh, tell me to pay attention. There we go. So that demonstrates that if I was to nod off, it should hopefully wake me up and uh, so I can pay attention. So it's got a camera here that's constantly monitoring the driver and uh, to see what the, what the head position is and where you're looking just to make sure they're actually paying attention to the road because that's a legal requirement um, and because the, the unit itself um, needs you to be constantly vigilant in order to take over should there be any issues. Occasionally when things get a bit complicated it hands back control to you or tells you it wants you to take control. Other times you, you may beat it to it and uh, see something that the computer hasn't seen and decide that you want to take back control. Um, you can steer um, however you want, which doesn't interrupt the control of the system at all. Um, the only thing that actually cuts it off is touching either the brake or accelerator pedals. And uh, now that we come into a 30 zone, I'll knock this down, just in case the cars in front of me disappear. I wouldn't want to get caught for speeding because I know there is a speed camera along here. So, the joys of hands-free hands -free driving. <laughs> just matching the speed of the vehicles in front and hopefully when we get the other side of this village the other vehicles will speed up a bit and it will take off again. Now this, the Comma 3 system can handle some of the smaller back roads as long as there's clear lane markings and, um, and you you don't set the speed too high. If you set it to the national speed limit on a twisty road, it won't be able to handle it. But on a wider road like this, um, where there's the national speed limit coming up, I can turn it back up again, like so. 60, there we go. And now it will accelerate up to 60 or match the speed of the car in front, um, whichever's um, the slower. There we go, now pulled up to the car in front. It's steering quite nicely, it's able to handle these sort of gentle bends, but say tight ones, that speed it, it won't be very good at. It also doesn't really handle roundabouts at the moment. As you will see when we come up to one in a little bit, I'll have to take control and steer around it and then re-engage. So if your journey has multiple roundabouts on it, it's probably not worth it because you have to constantly engage and disengage um, uh, the control system. Constantly paying attention, and I'm uh, ready to take control at any moment. 
I've done this route many times with it, and I know it's quite happy to drive around here. So we're approaching the first of several roundabouts now. We'll probably have to disengage it because it will try and match the speed of the vehicle in front, and when that vehicle goes around the roundabout, it will then try and speed up. But we'll give it a try, but I will be ready to grab the steering wheel and steer it as needed. See if it see what it tries to do. There go. It's trying to speed up because there's no vehicle in front. I'll just touch the brakes there just to slow it down a little bit. I'll engage it back again. When we're stuck in traffic, it's quite useful like this, because it will just poodle along and you don't need to do anything. You'll notice as well that the steering wheel twitches a lot more than it does if you just use the Kia's native lane keeping assist and um, intelligent cruise control. Um, it's, the system is constantly adjusting. It's apparently thinking 10 seconds ahead, so it's trying to predict what's going to happen in 10 seconds time. Um, and it's constantly updating that. You'll find when there's a, a road junction and things where it doesn't know which way you, you want to go, it's changing its mind until you actually give it some guidance from the steering wheel and then it uh, makes up its mind as to which way to go. So another roundabout, and I'm sure I'm, I'll need to take that control in a moment. Yeah, so it's trying to speed up because there's no vehicle in front. It flashed up a message there because it couldn't handle the steering, so it needed me to take that control. But I can let it go again because it's still engaged. We have another roundabout coming up here. And this is the sort of time where you have to engage and disengage quite regularly because there's multiple roundabouts. So it's often easier not to bother engaging it in the first place under these sort of conditions. And I'll just put my foot on the foot brake, which automatically disengaged it, so I can stay around in a controlled manner. Now that we're back on the clearer road, re-engage. It'll accelerate up to 60 as it says at the moment, but this is a 40 zone, so I don't want to do that. So let's uh, knock that down to 40. And it's quite interesting to see that the um, GPS speed um, on the comma unit is different to that on the car. It seems to be roughly three miles an hour difference, although currently it's giving me four miles an hour, but it's only just on the cusp. Another roundabout, so tap the brakes, disengage. Have a go around the roundabout, and turn it back on again. Now it takes a long time to turn speed back up again after other vehicles um, left the road in front of you, turned off and things. So I'm just taking over there just to speed it up myself. Now I'll turn it back on. Thirty mile an hour zone now, so I'll knock that down. Since there's no cars in front to limit my speed, I'll let the, uh, the Kia run at thirty miles an hour. Of course, if I wanted to match the uh, the GPS speed, I can just knock it up by three miles an hour on on the Kia, and then you should find that that will speed up a little bit. On there to thirty, the spot. And we've got another roundabout coming up here. Just about. So like I said, it's not really suitable for um, elements here where you have to keep um, engaging and disengaging. Where it really comes into its own is on dual carriageways and motorways, and I'll show you that in just a moment. Almost any car will work with the Comma 3 uh, system, as long as it runs the uh, canvas operating system. That's basically any car that's uh, less than six years old is likely to have that as part of the infrastructure of its control system. And the Comma 3 simply plugs into that um, between the camera that monitors the road and the rest of it. 
and then uh, takes control and it does the steering for you. As I say, so pretty much any any modern car can be fitted with a comma three. So here I am, just about to pull on to the A34, heading north from the M4 Junction 13. And this is where the comma three really comes into its own when you've got dual carriageway and pretty straight roads. So I'll just get it up to speed once I've pulled onto the dual carriageway. And then once it's up to speed, I'll engage the comma three. now at uh, 70 miles an hour. Obviously the truck in front is in the way. We've got a bit of space so if I signal and then give the steering wheel a little nudge it automatically changes lanes for me without me having to touch the wheel any more than giving it a little nudge. Which I find rather useful. So there's a gap in the traffic, I'll use it again to, to pull back in again. So we've got a few slow moving cars ahead, so we'll take a little while to get past them. motorway driving, um, hardly having to touch the steering wheel, so only needing it for overtaking or for merging uh, between motorways and A-roads. So it makes driving an absolute, absolutely blissful. <laughs> 